All right. Uh, welcome, everyone. Sorry about being a little bit late. Uh, my name is Nick Whittison. I work for a company called Canva. And I'll be talking today about, about user testing. Um, so this is my real opening slide. It's much better than the provided one. Um, so yes, as I say, I work for Canva. Um, Canva is a company that makes graphic design software. So we have a, a web platform and uh, currently on iPad as well. Um, it is basically a WYSIWYG um, graphic editor, uh, much like what you would do in uh, Google Docs if it could handle any graphics, or um, yeah, that kind of thing. It's, um, it's really, really easy to use, um, and as I said, I make, well, as you may guess, I make the, uh, the iPad app with a couple of other um, engineers. You can try out the Canva iPad app there if you wish, um, or just go to canva.com and uh, have a play around. Um, I thought of one great use case for everyone here. If you need to make uh, screenshots for your apps and, uh, and you want to make something that's a little bit more than actually just a screenshot, um, take, a, take a screenshot on your device, put it up on canva.com, resize it, put some text on it, export it, it'll look great. So. Um, as I said, I'm going to be talking a little bit about testing, and uh, there's actually been quite a few testing talks today. So, uh, um, in a sense, Bogo was talking about uh, testing in that um, sanitizing your code uh, or making making your code or project easier to digest um, is is usually the goal of trying to sanitize your um, your working environment. And uh, one way to do that quite well is by setting up tests and making sure that what you want to ship is actually going out there. Um, so uh, there's been quite a few other um, testing talks today. I've been quite surprised. So um, I'll go through a few uh, through a few testing, um, a few different types of tests. Um, so we have things like unit tests, integration tests, everything else tests. <laughs> And uh, there's actually quite a few of them. So you're not going to do all of them. Most of you won't do any of them. Some of you will do two of them. And um, today I'm going to be talking about two specific types. Uh, one of those is usability testing, and the other one is actually manual testing. So um, a lot of other talks you'll get information on how to set up automatic building, um, automatic testing pipelines. I'm actually going the other direction and talking about how you can catch a lot of errors with um, with your, your flows and your UX and your application as a whole by actually running through it like you were a user. Um, so yeah, what I guess I'm talking about today um, is two specific types of, of data, and those are the only types of data that exist. That is qualitative data and quantitative data. Now, if you've done any science before, these terms would have come up. Um, qualitative data is about collecting information-rich um, data points. So getting more detailed information about a single event or data point is usually what you're doing when you're collecting qualitative data. Um, and quantitative data is about collecting a lot of data points about a single event. So um, does, do, do you enjoy your application? Yes? No? Um, that, is, that is a single question with a single answer. If you collect hundreds of those answers, you'll have an idea of whether people like your application or not. But if they like it or they don't, you have no understanding of why they don't like it. That's where qualitative comes in. Um, you only get three or four different answers, or maybe 10 or 20 different answers, but they'll give you more detail on why they do or don't like things in your application. So um, the first thing that I mentioned that I'll go through is uh, manual testing. And I think there's this, um, there's this kind of opposition in engineering to, to do things as a human would do, um, because we have these really great tools that, that kind of automate all of those, those problems away for us, and they work really well to an extent. Um, I think that our reliance on these tools are really good if you put a lot of effort into making them really good, but um, to be able to do that, you have to actually research what makes them good, what the pitfalls are, and how to actually um, do them all correctly. And so not everyone, not everyone does that before they write these tests. Um, and so we integrate manual testing as part of our deployment um, pipeline. So every time we do a release on the web, every week we get, um, we get a bunch of people to do some manual testing. And that makes sure that, um, 
that at least everything that we know about in the application or every major interaction we expect to support still works week to week. Um, and this doesn't, as I said, doesn't replace automated tests, but it does catch a lot of things that are user-specific, human-specific, and also platform-specific. So um, while you might run automated tests in Xcode or in your browser, for example, what happens when you try and run, do that same thing in a different browser? Um, you may not have time to test all the different browsers when you try to do things. There's lots of different um, aspects of your deployment um, that, that aren't necessarily covered in, in every test case. Um, so, I was going to go through quickly what, what uh, Canva uses. So I mentioned that every week we do um, a deployment for our web product. And um, so every week we get our internal support staff. So we have a, a staff of uh, 20, um, uh, 20 people on our support. And um, we get five of them, one for each browser and one for iPad, to go through the current, uh, whatever's on the App Store um, or whatever's about to be deployed and um, test to make sure that everything still works. And this is really good because these guys know they're the first line of defense for any bugs or problems that users find normally. Um, so they have a lot of experience with catching when things can go wrong, and especially looking at things that developers often overlook. Um, so they can, they can very um, easily determine uh, when there's visual bugs in the program. But they do often tend to overcompensate for um, for smaller problems, so problems that might catch regular users in that um, there's a specific workaround for a particular action. Um, these guys, because they're experts, tend to, to find a way to, to overcome that rather than reporting that as a, as a problem because they don't necessarily see it as a problem. Um, and so for that, we use, for covering that extra test case, we use um, a service what used to be called Odesk, but it's now called Upwork, and that's a network of freelancers um, and it's basically a platform for hiring freelancers to test or to do whatever you want. So you want to, um, in our case, we want um, some people to run through this rather non-exciting list of um, click on this button, then drag this image onto the page, then put the words on the page, then change the words, then export the picture. Did it look like you, the thing that you created before? Um, that's not a particularly fun task, but it's still a valuable thing to do. And so we... Um, kind of outsource this work um, to, to other people as well to make sure we get some coverage. And uh, this is actually ends up being pretty cost effective because you can set your price, people will come in, offer you to, to take up your work, and you can kind of negotiate from there. So it's actually not too bad. Um, and in terms of managing these, uh, these big long scripts, we actually use a service called Clever Checklist. And this is a really great service for managing repeatable tasks. So if you do anything every day or every week or whatever, um, Clever Checklist allows you to define templates. So in our case, a testing script. Um, we can put in instructions. We can allow them to upload images and um, give feedback on any different items. They basically go through, tick things, yes or no, um, as working, and collect all that quantitative data for us. Um, looks a little bit like this. So this is one of our, the start of our iPad testing script. So it just has a bunch of... Uh, information there, they tick that they've read it. Um, it actually has 140 items on the iPad one and the, uh, the web one has quite a bit more. So um, that's how we do manual testing and that is really quite effective for us because of all the different moving parts in an application, um, testing them all in an automated way isn't necessarily an easy or uh, maintainable approach to to figuring out everything. Right? We, do, we definitely do, um, on the website, create Selenium tests on, on the iPad side. We, uh, we do automated UI testing. But um, to catch that first line of bugs, manual testing is very, very good because you see it from a user's perspective, not from, um, from what a computer sees of your application. Um, and that also allows your, your tester to cheat a little bit and give you some qualitative data back. So if they can comment on different things and say, I actually had a bit of a problem trying to find the filter button, even though you said, just click on the filter button, I couldn't see where it was, then um, they have an opportunity to give you a little bit more qualitative data as well. Um, so I'm moving quite quickly because I've got a lot of content. But the second type of testing I wanted to talk about um, is usability testing. And this is the, uh, the more qualitative data that, um, that you can get from your users. 
Excuse me. And um, really, I actually am really passionate about usable usability testing because it gives you a, an insight into how people how people think and how people parse information and how they um, they go from an idea to execution of whatever tasks they're given or whatever they want to do. And in that sense, it's actually really kind of like a, an intersection of art and science because humans aren't deterministic. You can't throw up a formula and go, this person will definitely do this thing given this input. Um, and it's one of those, those problems that isn't really solved. And so I think it's a, a really fun and creative way of approaching computing um, to, to try and figure out how people think based on input and output, which is what um, most science does. So with usability testing, um, I, I forgot to mention actually, with our manual tests, we normally do um, the five different um, internal staff and then maybe 10 to 20 different external ones, depending on um, how important the things are. But with usability, usability testing, you actually don't need as many people. Because you're getting more data-rich information back, um, you, can, you only have to use between three and five um, different, uh, different people to get a pretty decent coverage, so about 70%, 75%, sorry, um, coverage on, your, on the problems that you're going to be able to find. And um, Jakob Nielsen did quite a bit of research into figuring out what the optimal um, amount of people to do in usability studies was. And, um, and he, he, he goes, well, yes, you can do it. You can get 100% coverage with 15 people. But by the time you find 80% of the problems and fix those, you're going to have a different set of problems. So you're probably better off spending your time on three sets of five if you're going to spend 15 units of, of testing money, three sets of five to reduce the amount of problems you have quicker. And that ends up working quite well with the way that we're moving towards in software design in being agile and um, doing quite fast iterations to test ideas. So what we use at Canva to help with this, um, this user testing is a service called uh, usertesting.com. It's very imaginatively named. And uh, usertesting.com gives you a platform for hiring ad hoc user testers who, so basically if you go to usertesting.com and you want to be a user tester, you sign up, they send you, uh, you say, hey, I have an iPad, I can go do some user testing. They send you a camera. And this is the bit that's different from, from most other testing. So instead of just getting information on what they tapped on the screen, you actually get a video of what they did as well. And this gives you so much more information when you're looking at how people actually interact with things in your application. Why didn't they tap the button that was clearly on the screen? You can see it. You put it there so you know where it is, but they couldn't find it. Um, and Having that sort of information means that the, the user testing process gives you insights into how people actually parse and look at different parts of your, your application. Um, you usually get feedback within about an hour. So you'll post a job. Um, they, they spend at least 15 minutes testing the app. They run through your scripts that you've, uh, you've put, and they give you something that looks a little bit um, like this video. I didn't actually plug in. Choose this layout right here. I like it. Okay, so that's the first thing. Second thing uh, is an image that I search for. Okay. Anyway, so he. Um, so let me search for. We give him a set of instructions. He goes through search. and, uh, and tell him to search. He has a bit of a bit of a search around for where he can search. Types in some stuff, and um, <clears throat> and finds an image okay, that so uh, that he likes. Um, you see that he actually doesn't. We've got several ways of adding images onto the page in Canva. He doesn't uh, simply tap it like lots of people do, but he does drag it in. That um, looks really good. And then he actually. Wow, this is amazing. This is really fun. Actually, I'm, I'm having a lot of fun right now. And it, it actually, we, we were able to build a pretty strong correlation between people who used the 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 more sort of novel parts of the app and people who actually just verbally said, "I'm having fun." And that was, that was really bizarre, because like, as, a, as an engineer, you kind of build things. You're like, this is going to be so easy to use. It's going to be great. And then like, you've got people who are going, oh, this is really fun. And I'm like, yes, I spent hours doing that. I really hope that it is fun. Um, but I never would have thought that, that all these people are just going, yeah, I'm having a really great time doing this. It's not really a game. It's more of a productivity app. But building in those sort of things and testing with it, we were able to sort of iterate to the point where lots of people were actually having fun while they were doing some sort of uh, a presumably mandatory tasks that they had to do. 
Um, so quickly, I'm going to go through um, I'm going to go through how to write a script for um, for your usability tests. Um, and the first step is to really prime them accordingly. So you need to um, if your users don't um, have the right frame of mind, so if you don't have access to exactly the kind of like section of users that you're going to be giving to all the time, you need to kind of prime your user testers to get them into the right frame of mind. So for example, you're a business owner, you need to make a poster about a new bike that you're trying to sell, um, there you go, have, have at the application. And the first step would be open the app, do the things, blah, blah, blah. So getting them into the right frame of mind is quite important. Um, if you have access to the right section of users, you may not have to tell them anything, but um, that's just the first step. So the second one is to, to guide them without telling them what to do. So trying to um, get them to do a task without specifically telling them to tap on something, tap on the button, like so for example, if you wanted them to filter an image without telling them to tap on the image, tap on the filter button, select a new filter, and then tap off it, um, means that you'll get much more um, interesting and uh, useful information back from your tests. So not telling them what to do step by step is a really important thing. So one, um, one iteration of our, um, our testing strip goes like this. Instead of saying, uh, we used to just say that top part, which was create a design that you would be happy sharing. And that was it. And lots of people made a design and there was a blank page with some text on it that said, yeah, this design looks great. And they pressed the button and they shared it. It's like, good, you did it. You did exactly what I asked, but you didn't really do enough. And so you kind of had to, to get them and probe them to do a little bit more. Um, but if you tell them to do too much, then they're going to do exactly what they ask you to, what you, what you ask them to do. And then you're not really testing the usable parts of your app or whether, whether or not those, can, those people can actually use your app. So um, that brings me to encouraging exploration. So you kind of need to encourage them to touch the parts of the app that uh, that you want, uh, that you want touched, and uh, making sure that they can use those parts that, you're, that you need to test um, well means you need to prompt them to do it, but not so far as to tell them exactly what to do. So once you have um, once you have collected all of this feedback, um, once you have all of these videos, and once you figure out um, what what different sections of your app need work, uh, so what, uh, what you've got. Um, you need to kind of yeah, interpret all of it and consolidate everything. Um, and so from the user, user testing perspective, um, you kind of need to watch for people failing. Now, that's, that's probably the most important point, is just looking at when people get frustrated and when people just can't find what they're doing. So on usertesting.com, they kind of voice their opinion and they actually get marked based on how well they can communicate what they're thinking um, in that the, the, the owners of the test give them a rating and give them some feedback at the end. And so a lot of the testers have developed this, uh, this sort of behavior where they'll just sort of say what they're thinking all the time because that's more useful and then you'll get more useful information and more useful feedback from, uh, from the, the testers and from the testees. So um, yeah, just basically watching, watching what people do, watching people not touching the right thing uh, while they're trying to do the task that, uh, that you set them. And the second thing is sensing themes across different tests. So being able to, um, to go, well, these three people all had trouble when I asked them to, to um, crop an image, trying to figure out why, uh, how the image actually rotated or got big enough to, to crop or whatever. Basically finding um, themes yeah, across multiple tests on um, when people get, start to get bored, when uh, they start to yeah, get angry with different parts of things that you're telling them or they can't find different parts. Um, and sensing those things and writing them down is the, uh, is the second step in kind of yeah, getting towards more useful feedback. And the last one is uh, triaging your problems. So trying to figure out, once you have this set of, of usability issues you need to solve, figuring out which ones are the most important, which ones can't be fixed right now, and knowing when to, to dump those, those problems. And um, 
yeah, basically figuring out um, what's actionable, what's not, and what's going to be done later. And um, that in itself is, is quite, a, quite a hard problem to solve because everyone will have different, uh, different needs and different constraints pulling on them to get things done. Um, sometimes it might mean you have to completely rethink the way that you're approaching a problem and uh, it'll require quite a bit of time. So it's just something you need to negotiate with, uh, with what's important to you. So I thought I'd finish up the usability stuff with a few little, um, uh, I guess, tidbits on what you can do if you're not, um, not a, a large company with tens of developers. If it's just you or if it's just um, like three, three people trying to, trying to make an app, um, how you can actually still get useful user testing done. And the first one is, uh, is kind of pulling in all of your, all of your favors. So um, presumably most of you have friends. Um, most of you will also have family that, um, that are good and bad in varying degrees of, uh, of using technology. And those people are vital assets into to testing stuff that you're writing. So if, you're, if your software is user-facing and you need to test whether a regular person can figure out um, how to create a new um, design and um, share it with their friends on Facebook, then um, putting it in front of your mum or your dad, who, uh, like in my case, my mum has come leaps and bounds in the last five years, but is still quite quite afraid of computers. So watching her use iPad, uh, use the, the apps and stuff that I've written is actually quite a hesitant approach. She doesn't want to touch everything. She doesn't want to explore. And that's still a section of the, um, of the users that you have to counter for. So um, being able to uh, use, use the resources that you have as a cross-section of, um, of users is quite, uh, is quite valuable. The second one is expert testing. So, um, as a developer, you are quite expert in, uh, in the software that you've written. Um, and there are also other people out there who do design as a job and also do um, usability as a job. And you can, you can leverage that expert knowledge that they have and, and figure out what some of the overarching um, problems are with your, with your app. Um, just keeping in mind that both with the friends and family and the expert testing, you're going to get very different um, results because experts are more likely to pick up things that they know are wrong and uh, family are more likely to pick up, uh, sorry, that they, they know professionally are wrong. So big, uh, big problems like um, one example I had was um, taking the app to our designer and him going, tapping on an image, going, okay, I just want to make it more transparent. And he had a look and it's like, oh, there's no transparency button. Um, normally it's there, I guess it's probably in this menu. Oh, it's here, oh, it's got another main thing. I've got to change the slider, do whatever. Um, and he goes, maybe, maybe um, you should move that button into, into, the menu, into the menu bar because I use that all the time as a designer. And um, when I took it to, to my family, um, and asked someone to, uh, to use the, the app that had never used it before, they kind of just went, okay, well, this looks like there's more options. Oh, yeah, that's fine. Yep, just did it. And they didn't have a problem. And so you, you kind of find that people will definitely think that different things are a problem, and experts will think that um, these really hard technical challenges are a huge problem you have to solve, whereas regular people um, kind of just either adapt to changes or um, find completely different problems. So it's nice to get both. And the last one is field testing, so actually testing people out in the street. Um, if you're confident enough to go and, and stop someone in the street and say, hey, I would like you to use my, my app, um, or pulling in friends of friends or just complete strangers or putting out a flyer or something like that, being able to get um, people or you know, paying people to come in um, and test your app is also very, very useful. So, I actually think I went a little bit too fast. I lost track of time. Yes, anyway, so take homes um, for what you should learn, um, if anything, from this presentation is that uh, manual testing is a really great way of avoiding regressions. So, if you don't know what a regression is, it's just moving, you're trying to move forwards, but all you can get is going backwards. So things that used to work but no longer 
no longer work. Um, and yeah, manual testing is a really great way of avoiding a lot of problems that, uh, that can come up before they hit your, your user base. Um, usability testing isn't optional. So it's not one of those things anymore that you can just assume that what you have done is perfect and that you've created a really fun game that you really enjoy to play um, and that everyone else, you're sure everyone else is going to enjoy it because you really enjoy it. Um, testing things with, uh, testing applications or games or whatever with other people is no longer a thing that is optional. If you want to survive in a, in a world where um, there are millions and millions of other applications, um, making sure that people can use it and that it's fun and that it's whatever is, is no longer an optional thing. Um, another piece of advice is test early and test often. So if uh, you are in a larger group and you can test um, on usertesting.com, test your, build a prototype and test it on, on that service or test it with your friends or whatever and um, test it as early as you can because the earlier you can fail, um, the faster you can pick up from that failure and move forward. So um, that's the same, the same principle in pretty much, pretty much anything I do in life. Um, if I know I'm just going to be bad at something the first time, just do it bad the first time, figure out why you did it bad, and, uh, and just, just move on and just keep going. And you'll eventually come out with a product or whatever um, that's really great. Um, and yeah, have a bit of fun. So. Um, Testing can be quite a, a boring topic if you let it be. Um, sometimes with some of the usability scripts, um, I got them to, you saw this, uh, this presentation had quite a few of the same looking guy in it. Um, and he, uh, he has a particular face um, that is uh, emotion invoking. So I, I got to, uh, I got a lot of users to, to like, drag that in and, and uh, use that in some of their designs. So it's let them search for a very specific thing that I knew would come up with his face um, and see what happens when they, they did that. Um, it, didn't, it didn't affect the, the test, but I had a bit of fun watching them. Um, <laughs> I guess the, the, the point is, yeah. So have, try, try and make it an enjoyable experience, both, um, both for you and for the testers. Uh, it's actually quite rewarding to once you've been working on something for a really long time, go and show it to someone and have them have them go, yeah, this is really this is really great. Like not not because they want to, don't want to hurt your feelings, but because genuinely they're having fun with something. So usertesting.com, they don't they don't know me. They're not trying to try to um, appease me or tell me that my things are really great because they're my mum. Like they, they they they're just getting paid to do a job. So. Um, if they're having fun, they're probably genuinely excited about the, about the thing that they're doing. Um, and so this sort of testing can be quite rewarding as well. Um, so I guess if you've heard a lot about Canva, we're also um, hiring lots of really great developers. So if you want to, uh, if you want to join the Canva team, we have a city office. Um, have a look on that link or send me an email at nick at Canva. Um, but that's pretty much my talk. So thank you. Yes. Can I answer anyone's questions? Louis. Yeah, maybe moving towards uh, the next phase seven UI testing towards coming from the we're already doing soon. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so we, we're going to try and cover as many of those tests as we can in an automated fashion as well. Um, I think we'll probably still do some, some manual testing because um, I think the stuff that we end up getting, the most useful things we get up, end up getting from manual testing is people testing on like really weird devices, um, just like iOS 7, iPad 2s, and all sorts of other things, because you get a really nice cross-section of, of people, um, of, and those are people in the real world that are actually going to like potentially use your app. And so I think that um, while, yeah, automated testing absolutely is something you need to do, um, the manual testing gives you um, some extra assurance in different ways. Yes?
Uh, we actually don't integrate anything. Is there is there something specific that that? So it overlays it in the app, yeah, or? Yeah, All right. Okay. Mm -hmm. No, so that, that's with the iPad app. Um, so you can just upload you you upload an IPA to to user testing service. You don't have to integrate anything. Oh really? Right. As far as I know, we didn't we didn't do anything specific with user testing to get it to to work. We just uploaded. They actually do some weird hacky magic to swizzle out the profile and do something to let it work on other people's devices. And I can't remember us actually implementing an SDK. Um, so they actually they use it in tandem with a computer. So they um, they just press next on the computer, it tells them what to do, and then they kind of just do it all on the iPad. Yeah. Yep. Yep. Yeah, yeah. So I think um, at any point in an application cycle, if you have something that's contained enough to to test, um, and you have the resources to do it, absolutely. Like any feedback is useful feedback because if you're just sitting on a feature um, because you finished it and you don't want to show anyone because you're kind of um, trying to make sure. Uh, for whatever reason, I guess. Um, I think just getting more feedback is is better at any point. If you can capture um, a single interaction and just test that, if you have the ability to do that, then yeah. Um, yep. Um, sure. Um, we usually do it for every um, major feature. So if we uh, if we just do. Um, like the the web does uh, does it for big launches. iPad tends to do it um, every set of features that's significant enough to warrant it. It's kind of we just kind of make it up. Like if we if we only do small fixes to an existing thing, we don't we don't do as much. Um, but if we do a new big feature, we'll definitely do like if we put in crop or we put in filtering or something, we'll definitely do um, maybe five user tests and then figure out whether or not we need to do any more after we've fixed all the bugs. Um, but usually once you um, do some testing and get some feedback. It's wise to do some more testing on top of that. Yes? How does what you've described as uh, user testing and even use of people testing compare with standard QA testing? Yeah, so it is, um, it is sim like it's all just words for the same thing, I guess. Um, I, in computing, we tend to uh, label everything as very specific. Um, so what, what we call internally is manual testing um, or is usability testing or whatever, it's all encompassed by quality assurance. Like you want to make sure that the product is as best it can, can get before it uh, leaves the, the shelf. Um, but yeah, I, uh, I guess the answer is, yeah, just, um, just what you call it. It is, it is definitely quality assurance. <laughs> he won't do that, that's for sure. He won't do that. Ideally, yes. Um, like if you if you change something, then it's a it's a commuter responsibility to update the the scripts for um, for those kind of things. So you need to make sure that all that stuff is uh, is up to date and. Uh, and valid for whatever build you're about to deploy. I think I'm out of time. Cool. All right. Thank, Thank you very much. much.